a lot of the interviews I do are success stories. So I kind of have a list of about 10 questions or so that I, you know, I researched ahead of time years ago, and I can generally use those sort of same questions. And what happens is someone will say something interesting, and then we can go down a, th- a thread. So those 10 questions or so may turn into, you know, 40 as we have a conversation and go deeper and deeper. I'm pretty knowledgeable in the areas that I'm interviewing people on. So I can pick a tiny little thread and and make it really advanced and and go as deep as they're able to, or as, as much as I can keep up knowing that the audience is interested in really dense information and really, um, you know, deep in the weeds topics. So other interviews where maybe it's not a success story, maybe it's a founder of a software tool, I'll I'll have to do more research. So it it may be a little more similar to, you know, maybe what you're doing where you'll check out their website, you watch some videos, you'll maybe see what else you can find out there so that you know good questions to ask. So I at times I've done, you know, a couple, three hours of preparation. If I know it's a big interview and I need to do, I should always do a good job. But if I know that I don't have enough knowledge going in cold, there are other interviews where, you know, again, those success stories, I literally can have a couple of bullet points that the person told me. And then I can just go through the questions and people seem to like them. So I've, I've gotten better over time. I'm just curious. I want your tips. What, what do you do to prepare? Well, this is, I mean, I had, um, I had hosted a podcast a while ago. I, before I, you know, worked here, um, at video Husky and I had worked, um, in the NBA as a, as a blogger a journalist for, for a few years at the beginning of my career. And I hosted, co-hosted this podcast, um, an NBA podcast and, I don't think my preparation was very good back then compared to now. Although maybe I'm being a little bit hard on myself because my preparation, I guess, was just the day-to-day coverage of the team that I was I was reporting on. So the fact that I was going to practices and talking to players and coaches, that would give me like the knowledge set to know what it was that I wanted to talk about in a podcast um, episode. If we had guests... I would normally try to aim like you. I try to write down 10 specific questions and, and then know that, okay, I might not get to write all of the, or ask all of these questions when, when the interview happens, but at least I have them in my back pocket. Um, For this, it's been interesting. I'm kind of been, I've kind of been experimenting a little bit just based on who, who the guest is and I I'm always kind of worried oh maybe I'm like you know doing too much overkill here in terms of preparation cuz I want to try to make these as like conversational as possible and also at the same time I don't want to have um you know so many notes in front of me that I'm like getting super overwhelmed looking at that side of my screen um and then not listening to the person who I'm I'm interviewing. I I found that that's one thing that I'm doing now quite a bit, especially in this conversation, which I think is super meta for us to be talking about. Is you know I'll really try to listen um, to what the interviewee is saying, and then kind of you know put it in my back pocket, uh, little nuggets that are super interesting that I want to follow up on, um, and then go from there. It's tough. It's really tough because you don't want to leave too big of a a pause or some kind of awkward, just long period where you're not saying anything. So you're always trying to think like, oh, what I need, what do I need to ask next? But also you, you maybe should ask a deeper question about the thing they just said, which you're doing a great job on. And it, it reminded me of a couple interviews that I've done in person, live. And I, I also, a little bit, I'm, I'm talking about financial independence. I live in Longmont, Colorado, and there's some of the um, prominent 
fi and retire early kind of folks that live around here and yeah, I Mr. work at the Money co-working Mustache space. Mr. Money Mustache is out is out there, isn't he? Yeah, that's right. So that's the co-working space that I work at. His oh, name's cool. Pete. He's just a normal dude, but I haven't interviewed him, but I'm potentially working on that sometime soon. But I've interviewed the other owners there, Carl and Mindy Jensen, and they're very well known. Mindy Jensen has a huge podcast that she works on with Bigger Pockets. Carl Jensen is another one of the fixtures in the FI community, spoke at a few of the conferences, and I was able to interview both of them. And one thing that I tried to do was, you know, do all the research and, and have like talking points, but I also wanted to have sort of like a story arc, which I don't know if I was successful at it, but I tried to, you know, learn about them, take us through sort of a journey where people got to know. I mean, both of them commented like, hey, that was a really good interview. I think, I mean, interviewing is tough. I've done a lot of them at this point, but I also prepared for many hours for those because I knew that they were you know, prominent people and I wanted to make sure I did a good job. So that, that was one just additional thing where I, I tried to make sure there was kind of a story arc where one little point that I knew that they were going to answer a certain question with would lead us into the next question. So you don't always have the opportunity to do that, but like I, I thought about it hard enough where I think I pulled it off a couple times. Yeah, that's something I used to do quite a bit in it when I was a journalist, when I would go into practices and if I, I would have a story idea in mind that I wanted to write about, I'd have my angle and I would just start asking questions related to that and kind of take, try and take whoever that I was interviewing down that path to see if they would give me anything, anything good. And I kind of do that here too. I mean, depending on who, who the subject is, like, for example, with you, you know, you're, you're this expert in terms of affiliate marketing and building niche websites and whatnot. Um, And then also project management and being very systematic. So that's kind of, how I how I've wanted to approach and attack this interview in particular and focus on those things. Um, but then maybe with another um, creator who I talk to, maybe they're a traveler and I'll talk more about their travels and and how they've um, you know created content related to that. Um, so it's all like different. there's so many different ways to do it. and I, I feel like, it's just going to be a process of like continually trying to get better. I'm also trying to just study some of the great, you know, in- interviewers out there. I mean, I-, I had the fortune. I don't know if you've um, you've heard of him or listened to his podcast, but a couple of years ago, I had a chance to work with a um, great podcaster now, but he used to write for Esquire magazine for a really long time. His name is Cal Fussman. Oh, yeah, I've heard of him. Yeah, I had heard him on like Tim Ferriss's podcast a couple of years ago and I just reached out to him cold and then kind of built a relationship with him and his manager. So I got to work with him on some of his content related things a little bit for, just for a very short period of time. But um, just getting to, you know, observe how he goes and approaches interviews. He he, he talks about... Um, you know, this idea of letting the silence sometimes do the work because sometimes you can kind of let it breathe, let the interview breathe for a little bit and even for just like one, two, three seconds and then somebody will just kind of, the person that you're interviewing will find a way to to fill that silence or, or add to it without you having having um, asked a follow-up question. Or even now, like, I, I, you know, studying what Joe Rogan does and how he conversates with people um you know others as well mark Marin is a great podcaster who 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 does a really good job in terms of interviewing so and it's fascinating to me to like even i'm i find myself listening differently (laughs) when i'm listening to podcasts and trying to hone in on what it is that the host is doing in particular versus just kind of listening to the show holistically yeah, it, I do exactly the same thing where I, I find, I'm like, why did they ask that? And, oh, that was cool how they followed up in that way. I got to remember to do that sometime. 
yeah no it's it's super interesting but I, I i enjoy it i like this again as i mentioned to you in the beginning i'm like this is a this is kind of just a way for me also to kind of talk to people who you know i look up to or are interested in learning something from i think that's one of the biggest benefits of of hosting a podcast is that you just it's almost like a free consulting session to be quite honest so and we can share that information with with the audience as well you know because we're we're obviously you know reaching people who are creating content on youtube creating video content so at, like you with your with your website people just want to learn from other people how how they've done things and so this is that's just the approach that i'm taking here with with this show as well Let's go.